Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well, and I hope that you are in very, very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And I really mean that, my friends. Please continue to stay safe and stay strong during these times. Now, I'd like to continue on today, if I may, with a video a day wherein I'm talking about a film or a TV show that in one way or another I feel has a connection in spirit with the season that we find ourselves in right now, which is Halloween, October 2020. Halloween is just around the corner. Today I'd like to talk about a film by a really important and fascinating and uh, integral filmmaker in modern cinema. His works are already quite iconic and they are thought-provoking, challenging, deep, and I, I mean this in a good way, oftentimes quite disgusting and very difficult. And as I say, let me say it again, I mean that in a very positive context. The filmmaker is David Cronenberg and the film I just wanted to speak to you about and share some comments that I have about is this film from 1983. This is his iconic landmark milestone work, which is called Videodrome. The film Videodrome, I think, is on the one hand, it could be said to have a somewhat straightforward plot in terms of the focus on the the influence of media and perhaps the, the corrupting uh, influence of certain forms of media. And in this sense, we're talking about television and the broadcast waves that are associated with such media. And we are also talking about here the urge for ultimate thrills in entertainment and also the yearning to learn more about thresholds and extremes and the limitations of human experience when we are talking about how we interact with the environment. And in many ways, in today's parlance, our interactions are perhaps based on waves, on signals, on images that traverse points. So this is the new world that is being explored, the terrain that is being explored, I think, in Videodrome. So perhaps in those terms, this film can be said to be maybe straightforward in those terms. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that very positively because I think that's very important. There are aspects of this film, yes, that I think pave the way for a certain sense of being able to access and understand and sympathize and empathize with the world from the viewpoint of the spectator, of the viewer. So I think in those terms, this film has a certain sense of, of dare I say it, a certain sense of grounded sensibilities about it okay, on the one hand. However, and I really have to underline and circle this word, however, that is only the beginning of the equation when we're talking about Videodrome because from those points of accessibility, as some of you, uh, as those who have watched this film I'm sure can attest to, from those points of accessibility, this film, simply put, explodes in a whirlwind of imagination, uh, confusion, hallucination, and nightmare, and fantasy, and the blurring of lines between what is fantasy and what is real, to the point of almost a, a, a kind of journey that can be said to be both evolutionary on the one hand, and also extremely self-destructive on the other. And where those two 
forces meet, I think, uh, calls for some extraordinary proceedings indeed. This is an absolutely explosive work. It explodes in terms of energy and ideas, and it goes so far. Once I feel like I have a grasp as to what is going on, suddenly my expectations and my balances are all shifted and they are uprooted so as to create a loss of equilibrium on the part of me, the viewer, which is, I think, a, 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 a really brilliant uh, effect that this film has. There are some nightmarish images. There are extreme images here of violence, of, of, a, of sadism, and of masochism. And there are extreme views on, on sexuality that perhaps border on the sense of the sleazy. But that is all part of the point. Because what we are talking about in the end here is this sense of the medium and the effects of the medium and what can be said to be perhaps the unseen effects of the medium on the mind, on the psyche, and on therefore one's own existence. Because after all, if we think of terms of existence as being the way that we perceive the world and the way that we perceive each other and the way that we perceive ourselves. In other words, if we link the concept, uh, the very ge in general terms, if we link the concept of existence and our own understanding of what it is to be in existence, if we link that with the idea of perception, then we look at this film and we realize if that gateway between existence and perception is warped and it has become boundless and it has become corrupted or it has become a place of pure folly and fancy where anything is possible, any form of imagination or any kind of, of fantastic, gross, you know, vile, or even uh, outlandish type of scenario can be invented in the mind or can be hallucinated, then the idea between perception and reality and thus perception and existence, I think, uh, becomes a fair game and anything is possible, which I think leads to some feelings of liberation, but also some feelings of real f fright and uh, uh, the, the horror of that kind of unknown. And I think that is, in essence anyway, what is at play here in this really complicated work from David Cronenberg. So this is the film Videodrome. I absolutely love this film. I have loved this film ever since I first saw it. And it was on VHS tape many, many years ago when I was a kid growing up. And it had that grungy, dirty quality to it that is the whole point of Videodrome. There is in the air something that is a, a, some kind of influence. Something external becomes internalized. And we don't know it because we can't see it, but we can feel it because we, we perceive it. But we don't quite know what we perceive. And that that uh, double speak or triple speak or quadruple speak, if you will, I think plays itself out so brilliantly in the way that images are edited in, in the way that fantasy and reality seem to blend and merge to the point where we're not quite sure what is going on anymore. But we go along with it because we understand that this is the groove, this is the feeling, this is the vibe of the film, this is Videodrome. And when those images come, they really have a force, do they not? There are some really, really outlandishly uh, unforgettable images that are conjured up here that can be seen as being both violent and sexual and both uh, uh, very erotic and also quite nasty 
and uh, shocking. And it all becomes this confusion of a swirl, much like the narrative does in terms of the confusion of the boundaries between fantasy and reality, to the point where I think ultimately we are left wondering, I think, in a good way, we are left wondering where do we find ourselves at the film's end? And I think that is a, a genius type of move on the part of Cronenberg and company to create this sense of the boundless in terms of the, the real chaotic, almost anarchic quality when the boundaries between perception and existence and our notions of reality break down what is left. Well, the thing that's left here is uh, something akin to uh, the, the absolutely uh, outlandish, outrageous, out-of-this-world type of style that is the film Videodrome. This is one of the all-time greats, in my opinion. It's a tough film, that's for sure, and it's, it can be quite confusing. But, uh, as I say, I think that is also part of the point. And it's the feeling of confusion, disorientation, of not quite knowing what is going on. I think that is a, a marvelous feeling to be in because it puts us essentially in the thick of things, as it were. So we can experience it alongside the characters that we follow. That is an amazing feat, something that I think is not very easy to accomplish, but Cronenberg seems to accomplish it with such seems to accomplish it with such ease and such deft of skill of hand, sleight of hand. Absolutely amazing. And it is very difficult in terms of its images. There are some real graphic, shocking moments here. So this is certainly not for everyone. So please be wary of that if you are unsettled by some disturbing imagery. This is not for you. But, but, for anyone else who is okay with that kind of material and has not yet experienced Videodrome, you are in for one heck of a ride. Directed by David Cronenberg, starring James Woods from 1983, the one, the only, Videodrome. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, my dear friends. As always, you are the best. Your support and kindness mean so much to me. And so let me in turn say to you, say to all of you, my dear friends, stay safe, stay strong, and cheers. See you in Pittsburgh.